Kia ora, I'm Ann Thorpe. Welcome to Kai Order. We're cunny cunning on the show today. A little bit of salsa, tango, you name it, we've got it. I'm cooking up a storm. I have the most fantastic guests. Come with me. Kaimwana and fresh produce dominate my pātaka today. Ocean Seafood in Auckland have supplied me with these gorgeous crayfish. I've got some Morton Bay bugs here, which are known as slipper lobster also. And you know what? The snapper is that fresh, it's being fished in the Hauraki Gulf as we speak. Well, I'm kicking off with a very delicate dish today. And it's made with these Morton Bay bugs, or the slipper lobster as it's known elsewhere. First of all, I'm going to put some oil in my pan and get it on the stove to heat up. I'm just using extra virgin olive oil. Now these bugs are snap frozen. They've come from Australia. They're very, very fleshy inside. And I thought that Miriama and Johnny will just love this as a kickoff today because you know what? They're gonna be kicking up their heels on this show. Into this other pan here, I'm going to pour some hot water. because with these I'm going to have some snap peas and some gorgeous beans to go with it and just have a little delicate appetizer to kick off with. Into my fry pan. They're so huge, so I'll only need one each. Pop them in there, just gonna let them braise away and you'll see they're gonna change color for us. And when that happens, they're practically ready. I've got some mange tout here or some sugar snaps, just tidy them up while we're waiting for those bugs to cook. And with these beautiful beans, there's no string to them, so all we need to do is just cut them up a little bit. Nice bite-sized pieces. Now my beans have come from the market. They were picked yesterday. Hey, look what's happening. I'll show you. Look, we're changing color. They're nearly cooked. Get these out of here smartly. Put them into the water. Chill them right down instantly. The colour's gonna stay there. The crunch is gonna be there. Voila, look at that. Cooked perfectly. Pull them out of here. It's not overcooked. It is slightly under. That's how you should be cooking your kaimwana. I need to get my scissors and cut away the underbelly here. And look, it's a bit hot to handle. I cut these up like this. I'm gonna plate this little appetizer up. So you've got the best of the bean family, you've got the best of the pea family. I'm going to dress this, of course, with extra virgin olive oil a little bit of lime, and I'm going to garnish with the beet leaves that I've got here from our baby beets that we're going to be using later. Sprinkle with a little bit of New Zealand sea salt and some freshly ground white pepper. And there we have it, a lovely little appetizer from Miriamo, Johnny and myself. Tahirua, cha cha cha, torufa, cha cha cha. I'm cooking kani kani koda today. And why? Because my guests, Johnny and Miriama, are dance stars. Yeah, and I'm getting my little wriggle in before they get here. Here we go, over here. They were alive just before, but we've knocked them off so I can put them in my steamer. I love using the lemongrass in my cooking. I love the fragrance it has. It's very subtle. So I'm just cutting it and bruising it to get out the maximum flavour from it. And then I'm going to fire it into my steamer here, chuck it all in, and my kaffir lime leaves too. The coda is going to have a lovely perfume to it, but just very, very subtle. Put this bigger one in first. That should take about 10 to 12 minutes 
to cook. Into my pot over here, I've got salted boiling water. Now, I've put a lot of salt in there because it's for the linguine. And out of this packet, I am just taking enough for three people. This is going to take about 10 to 12 minutes too. So we've got the coda happening and we've got the linguine happening at the same time. Now into this pan here, I'm going to put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I've got a whole onion and I've got about five cloves of garlic. Why five cloves of garlic? Because I love the flavour. And I think linguine needs a little bit of flavouring up, don't you? Now I don't want to brown these up, I only want them translucent. Just soft enough to bring out the flavours of that garlic and the red onion here. And what I'm going to do is add my ginger. I didn't want to cook my ginger, I just want to heat it with the warmth of the pan and the onions and garlic, and likewise for the chilli. Those are my lovely flavourings for my linguine. You don't want to overcook the linguine. Try that. Let's have a look. Well, it's not very far away. What's the time? Yep. I'd say one more minute and it's ready. The crayfish must be ready too. Let's have a look. Look. Look how beautiful they are. Get this linguine off. I'm going to put my linguine in there. It's a little bit of shardy to cool that down, stop the cooking process, and add all my bits and pieces here. I've got some curly parsley here that I'm going to mix in as well. And you know what? When you get a little bit of crayfish on that linguine, it's explosive, believe me. Got some lime juice here that I'll just squeeze over while I'm waiting for that to cool down a little so I can manhandle it and then get these little beauties happening. I'm going to use my cleaver here and cut through that magnificent shell like that. I'm going to open it up, check this out. It is absolutely beautiful. And look at that paru. Us Māori love that paru. Pull that away from there. Look at that. And well, look at this. This is obviously the female because that red that you see there is the formation of the eggs. Sorry. Take this out now. Pull the beautiful flesh away from the shell. My crayfish linguine or my cunny cunny cray is going to be superb. And then cut it up and add it to my linguine. I'm going to put in a little bit of the paru into my linguine. Don't need much. And then I'm just going to throw this on, toss that through. I've got some whole parsley here to go over the top with. And of course, delicious New Zealand extra virgin olive oil generously over the top. And there we 